One of the biggest arguments against vibe coding and non-technical founders using things like Claude Code and Cursor to create software is we don't really know what's going on under the hood. And that's true, but I don't think it means we shouldn't be doing this. In this video, I'm gonna show you two things that I've learned in the past week that have helped me immensely in understanding what's really going on under the hood so I can create better products for my customers to grow my business. Hey, if we haven't met before, I'm Craig Hewitt. I ran the 100 Days of AI Challenge, 100 videos in 100 days all about AI. This is my first video back kind of on the mic since then, took a couple days off three days off, uh, but now I'm back at it, just sharing what I'm learning, building products and businesses with AI. And today we're talking specifically about Claude Code because it's by far the most powerful AI tool out there, especially if you're building software products in SaaS, like I am with Linkberry. If you wanna check out linkberry.ai, links in the description below, AI writer for LinkedIn to get you thought leadership and customers on autopilot. But what I've learned in the past week or so is how to use agents and how to have Cursor and Claude Code especially teach me what's going on with my product. And so I just wanna show you an example of it here as we go into Cursor. And so Cursor is an IDE, Integrated Development Environment, and Claude Code runs inside Cursor. So Cursor is kind of an application and Claude Code is an agent, an AI agent that helps you to do a lot of things and code is one of them. Okay, and so one of the things that I want to do is just understand what's going on under the hood. So I can give a prompt saying, hey, like you're a LinkedIn writing agent, go write posts for LinkedIn. But I want to see like the prompt. I want to see how the sausage is made. And so just last night, I said to Claude Code, hey, I want to understand how posts are being created. What are the prompts being sent to AI? How are the profiles and templates used? And Linkberry, we have like a profile for a person that's a bunch of context. And we have templates of like well-known to be successful LinkedIn posts. Uh, and then we kind of mash that together with a topic to create really great content. Show me all about it. And I just want to like show here how we can use AI as a tool to teach us stuff so that we can do our job better. And so it went away and it did some stuff and it gave me a very thorough breakdown of things here. And so there's three ways that posts are created manually. Uh, so a user can go into Linkberry and just hit, I want to create a post and tell uh, the system what topic it is. That's cool. It can be generated based on a template. So, you know, mentioned like, this is a really well-known type and format of posts that we want to create and from an interview. So we have a concept of like an interview where a person can speak or type into Linkberry, like a recent experience or a tale or a lesson or something, and then it will create a post based on that. And that can be either short or very long. So three ways that they're, that they're done. And if I wanted to, I could command click and open this file up here to take a look at like exactly what's going on. And if I like understood the code, I could go in and like take a look at all this and, and tweak things. And this is probably be especially for like a prompt if you're an AI tool, like, hey, show me the exact prompt. This is the thing I wanna get like my hands dirty. I wanna really like take a look at this. So I could open up these and, and see the actual prompt that's being sent. So that's cool. But then it goes even further. So here is the AI services architecture. So we're using Open Router. It's a way to switch between LLM. So like sometimes we want to call Claude, sometimes we want to call OpenAI, maybe sometimes we want to call Grok. That's cool. Claude has a service itself, and these are the ways that we use Claude. As we're building the profile, this is what we're doing. Uh, the prompts being sent to AI, you're an expert LinkedIn writer. This is cool. So, and it's telling me this is exactly where that prompt is. Again, so if I want to go see this, I can click this to open it, and I can go play around and, and tweak things. And so like... The application of how I'm using this isn't as important as how you might use it, right? So as you're kind of watching this, you're like, hey, what do I not understand about what I'm doing? And it could be could be development, it could be marketing, it could be uh, sales, it could be operations. If there's something kind of going on under the hood that's like AI magic and you're like, hey, I really want to understand more about that, just ask. And it'll create a really thorough, deep explanation of it for you so you can do a better job of like implementing the thing that you're actually working on here. So this is really cool. And so I got a lot of good feedback from AI. And then I came down here and said, okay, based on all this information, what are three things you think we can do to improve any aspect of the post creation process? Cause like in Linkberry and in, in my application, that's everything. If we can't use AI to write better LinkedIn content than you can do manually really fast, there's no value to the product. 
And so it had several really good recommendations for me. And they just copied these and created issues in GitHub. And so we're going to implement all this. So this is just an example of you can say like, hey, there's something kind of magic going on under the hood. I probably don't understand. Explain it to me. And then once it has that context, you can say, cool, like how do we make this better? Okay. The second thing I want to show you is how I'm using agents. I touched on this before is like introducing a concept of agents, especially in Claude code on the web, gives you a potential for like weirdness with like versions of the code going on in different places because you have like an agent that pulls the code from GitHub and does stuff over here and then it can bring it back into GitHub and maybe you can even change that code in GitHub. But then on your computer, you have code that's happening too. You know, I can maybe write this code and have it do a feature or whatever. And then these things are out of sync. And so what I'm doing these days is I'm using... Claude code and cursor on the computer when I want to actively be doing something. So it could be development, it could be using our SEO machine like content writing tool, which is just a different Claude code project, uh, seomachine.io, there'll be a link in the description. It could be like building a feature, or running a security scan or something like that. So like when I want to be hands-on, I'm in Cursor and you know using Claude code to help me build features and product. When I have something that I just want to go do, that's when I'll use the agents if I don't need to be hands-on. And so I'll, let me pull up cursor here. So let me pull up Claude code here and show you a few examples of agents that I spawned just today. So this is one I ran a couple days ago. So I said, if I go all the way to the top here, I said, your role is that of a CTO. You're an architect level developer with 15 years experience. Basically find ways where best practices of development have not been followed and it would make this application not production ready to start taking on customers. This is just like, hey, go do a bunch of research, think very heavily about this and give me a report. And so it did, it created a to-do list and it went away and did a whole bunch of work and came down here all the way to the end and gave me these things that I need to fix. So this is really helpful because now I'm like, cool, uh, I know what the problem is. And I can either, you know, pull this branch and go take a look at that report or just come in here and say, hey, go, go do these things. And I did that for some testing today. So I said in just in the cloud here. This is an example of where I kind of had an iterative session with it. You're a coding test agent. Uh, like review the code base and it's entirely look for errors where there's little or no tests. Tests being like places to check that you're building things that you actually want to build and that they work. So it went away and it did a whole bunch of stuff and it gave me a report of like where we have good tests and where we have gaps. And so it gave me this whole report and I was able to say just right here in the Claude code session, I was able to say, cool, do phase one and it wrote all these tests. And then it came back and I was like on a call while I was doing this, cause it's like, hey, just go do this thing. And then uh, I said, okay, go do phase two and then phase three, right? Uh, and so that what happens is it creates this branch. And so if we go to GitHub, you can see like there's a concept of branches here and you can see all these branches that, that this has done. You know, we had like this branch here which was uh, one of the issues that the CTO agent uncovered. You're missing a Stripe web hook handler for payment processing. Cool, so it just went and it fixed it. Uh, I spawned a different agent to do this, this agent right here. It went away, it, I gave it the issue. Uh, I said, hey, this is the issue from the CTO report. Go, go fix this issue, please. It went and did it and it created this branch. For something like this, I just merged this straight into production because we're pre-launch like further on I would like merge this into development and then pull development down and run it on my local machine just to make sure it works okay but I just merged this straight into development so for things like test or fixing security issues or think or like really simple features I would probably just merge it straight in and then pull it down onto my computer and check out that the new check out the updated or pull the updated master branch the other way to do it is to pull this branch specifically onto your computer, run that uh, in your local environment and make sure that like the changes that they made didn't break things before you merge all those into the main branch. So I know like if you're an experienced developer out there, you're like, oh my gosh, you're like cowboy coding, you're merging stuff into the main branch before you even know if it works. I'm pre-launch, I'm probably a month away from launching at this point. Now I'm probably two weeks away from launching at this point and the things that I asked to do are basically like write test and fix security issues. So I know that like, even if it breaks things, those things have to happen. So I'm kind of okay with that risk. I just want to mention this because these are the kinds of things that I'm using 
Claude code agents for in the browser are like security, tests, I had it write a 90 day content plan for me and create like a whole buyer persona. So I'm gonna go load all this up into SEO machine that I talked about and we're gonna go create a whole ton of written like SEO content for the website. You could have it act as like a product manager and say, hey, like review the product, look at our kind of thesis and brand statement for kind of who we are and map out what you think the next, you know, six months of product roadmap could be. There's all sorts of stuff you can do with Claude Code in the browser. That doesn't mean you have to be sitting here and looking at code and talking to the agent actively. So I just wanted to share kind of how I'm differentiating these two. One very important point is don't think that you can run multiple agents of Claude code on your local machine in different branches. You can't. <laughs> the branch on your local machine is the branch, no matter how many you know windows of Claude code you might have going on here, the branch is the branch. And if you think you're working in this Claude code instance on one branch, and in this Claude code session on another branch, you're not. And I learned that the hard way, so just trust me, okay? So uh, I hope this is helpful. If you're interested in Linkberry, we do have waitlists going. We're gonna be opening it up to our first users in a couple of weeks, linkberry.ai. Please go check it out. I'm Craig Hewitt. I always wanna say this 100 Days of AI because I said that for 100 days in a row. Uh, but this is Building with AI is the new series that we're building here. And I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like, subscribe, smash the bell. I'll see you soon.